Hi everyone, I am Abdullah Al Shahad, Senior Software Engineer here at AppScode. Today, uh, I will give you a brief introduction about how you can provision and manage ZooQR Ensemble on Kubernetes using KubeDB. It is one of the new databases we have re added recently. So uh, without further delay, let's jump into the contents. So first I will uh, have a, I will explain what is ZooKeeper, what you can do with it. And then I will briefly uh, show you how ZooKeeper architecture works. And then we will see how you can, uh, uh, we will see the live demonstration. In the live demo, I will show you how you can provision ZooKeeper in Kubernetes using KubeDB. And after that, we will have a Q&A session. You can ask me any clarification question. Uh, and you can also ask the question in the chat during the presentation. I will answer them during the Q&A session. So let's dive in. What is ZooKeeper? So <laughs> ZooKeeper is an open source tool. It is a distribution coordinate, coordination service. It is first built in uh, Yahoo, and then it is uh, managed by Apache. So <laughs> it is. Uh, it can help you coordinate between your distribution distributed systems and you can manage the cluster and configuration which uh, which are distributed in the nature using zookeeper and uh, when you have more replicas you need a leader and a follower when you have a leader and follower pattern you can use zookeeper to leader election in your instances and you can uh, acquire distributed log and synchronize your um, data using ZooKeeper. So here is a uh, basic ZooKeeper architecture. You can see that uh, there are five servers and among five servers, one is leader and other, uh, the others are follower. And the client can connect to any of the server and uh, when connect writes to a server, it writes the data and it forward this data to the leader. And leader is responsible for synchronizing the data across other uh, other members of the ensemble, so that so that the all the members of the ensemble or, or the servers are synchronized and have same set of data. And when client fetch data from any of the server, they get the same data. So this is the basic architecture of ZooKeeper. So in the ZooKeeper, we have nodes. So we can create different nodes. It is like a uh, Linux system, Linux file system. So you have root directory and in the root directory you can create nodes uh, in the subdirectories and each directory can contain some data using that you can you coordinate your service and uh, <coughs> you can create leader election okay so uh, let's have a look how we provision zookeeper with kubedb so when you install kubedb operator uh, zookeeper crd is installed along with the operator and uh, kubedb op operator watches the zookeeper crd so when as a user you create delete or update the crd zookeeper operator will uh, create the zookeeper database so uh, to create the to create and manage the zookeeper database you need a set of kubernetes components so kubedb operator will create each one of them so let's have a look first kubedb operator will create a service account then the service you can connect to the zookeeper using the services and after that it will create the necessary permissions using rvac to uh, run in the cluster and then the stateful set the stateful set will contain the images uh, the, the stateful set will run actual database and after that uh, it will create the post pod disruption budget so that uh, the deletion or migration of the instances have a have synchronized manner or the manner you have declared and uh, when you enable monitoring, the ZooKeeper operator will create service monitor that will uh, export the ZooKeeper uh, that will export the ZooKeeper uh, metrics in the Prometheus server. And after that, we have the app binding, the necessary information to connect with this ZooKeeper instance. This app binding is used by other apps like a Stash to connect to the ZooKeeper. And KubeDB is offering different features. Let's have a look. So we are using lightweight and CBE free container images for the main container, uh, main ZooKeeper container and the init containers. And uh, we have customizable health checker that checks the health of ZooKeeper. And you can provide custom configuration when we bootstrap the ZooKeeper instance. And we are using persistence volume so that uh, the data is stored permanently. When you have accidental deletion, uh, you don't lose your data. And after that, we have multiple termination policy. Like there is uh, four termination policies. They are do not terminate, delete, 
and uh, another one is wipe out and another one is halt so when you use do not terminate user cannot uh, you prevent the accidental deletion cube deep operator won't let delete this instance and when you use uh, halt the secrets are there when you de delete the database all other instances will be deleted when you use delete the secret and pvc are stored and other instance will be deleted and when you used uh, wipeout termination policy uh, all the instances created by zookeeper operator uh, kubedeep operator it will be deleted and after that we configure default security context so that no image uh, no coordinator uh, no image no container image run as a root so you can you install kubedb using this command and uh, remember to set global.featureguest.zookeeper to true to uh, enable zookeeper and uh, you, you can find this command and other command other necessary information to get license in uh, in the kubedb website kubedb.com and now let's head over to the demo so we have a sample eml we will deploy this eml uh, and I will explain you the YAML. Let's just first deploy the YAML. Okay. So I have the YAML here. We will deploy the YAML. So the YAML, the Zookeeper instance is provisioning. And uh, by the time I will explain you the YAML, it, it should be ready. So let's head over here. So here in the metadata section, we have name and namespace. The name of the database is uh, Zuki ZK cluster and namespace is demo. Uh, in the spec, we have uh, version. So version is 3.9.1. KubeDB offers three different Zuki version. Let's have a look at here. So as you can see, we have three different Zookeeper version, 3.7.2, 3.8.3, and 3.9.1. We will keep adding version as Zookeeper releases new versions. And the image is built by AppScode, and uh, it is uh, CB free and lightweight. And uh, let's uh, in the next section, uh, spec.replicas, we have three replicas. So there will be three instances of uh, three ports that will contain three different Zookeeper server, and you can configure a config. Con you can configure uh, using this field config secret. You configure you the different custom configuration and create a secret, and you refer that secret in the config secret uh, field here. And the config secret should be in the same namespace as the database. And in the storage section, we have. Uh, resources so we request one gigabyte memory uh, for a storage and a storage class is name is a standard this is the default storage class in the kind cluster i am using and access mode is read write once and here uh, as for the demo purpose i use the termination policy wipeout i uh, ask you to explore other termination policies when you use production grade zookeeper Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, as you can see, Zookeeper database is ready here. Uh, and uh, you, you can see here that there is uh, three, three Zookeeper instances as we seen in the YAML. And I have previously installed kubedb instances here. So kubedb operator created other things for the YAML. So let's have a look. So, so initially uh, there is service in the demo space so you can see that there is three different service the kubedb instances have created so one is uh, for the internal communication of the instances that is a uh, headless service and another two services zookeeper admin server and the zookeeper cluster so when you use admin server commands to, to use the admin server commands you need this service so using this service you can do this admin server commands in the zookeeper and here is the default load balancer service this service is uh, you can define the type of the service this can be a cluster ip or load balancer and using this service you can uh, interact with the zookeeper instance so let's see who each other instances uh, is created 
So you can see there is one per set. The per set is uh, another version of a stateful set we are using here at uh, KubeDB. This is, uh, you can say that this is enhanced version of a stateful set. So uh, I say one stateful set is uh, created and uh, so you can see three different ports are here so there are three different zookeeper server running so i want to connect with one of them and uh, see that if we can read write data so let's have a look <clears throat> so you can connect the database through the service uh, for the demo purpose i am connecting through the terminal here so let's just exec into the port So you can see I have connected to the Zookeeper uh, Zookeeper container. So another container is Zookeeper init, which just uh, initialize the configurations and start the server. And uh, this init container is responsible for connecting the server into one ensemble. So let's check health. So you can see the return command is I am okay. You can see here. So I have just uh, forwarded the are you okay command using NC in Zookeeper and Zookeeper responded with I am okay. So this server is okay. And in the health checker, we, uh, we ping all the server and ask them if they are okay. And if everyone is okay, only then we uh, change this status to ready. So now let's uh, create a node in the Zookeeper. So here are a lot of logs that is connection logs. So let's see here. Yeah, you can see that uh, it created a hello directory uh, in the root directory. Okay, so let's create another directory. Okay, so let's just put create here. Yeah, as you can see, we have created another directory temp. So now in the uh, in the root directory of the Zookeeper server, we have slash temp and slash hello did. So let's get one of them. Uh, as you can see, we have the message here when we get the data. So let's create another directory, another subdirectory in the hello directory. Uh, as you can see here uh, created slash hello dear slash sub so we have created a subdirectory inside the hello directory and now let's try to get the data from that subdirectory so uh, this command should get me the data i have written in this subdirectory yeah so this subdirectory is the value i have written in that directory so in this way you can create a uh, directory like tree structure and uh, do your different zookeeper operations like uh, coordination between distribution service distributed system or leader election so now let's have a look at the images we are using Okay, so this is the YAML of the pod. So you can see here the secret is passed uh, and we have different uh, configuration that these configurations are default. Uh, so some configurations are default. When you don't provide the configuration, we provide the default configuration. Okay, so now let's get the uh, pad set. So you can see in the init container, we have a zookeeper init, the image name. So this image is built by us. So this image is responsible for configuring the cluster. And we have in the main container, we have uh, another image that is uh, zookeeper 3.9.1, the version I have provided in the YAML. Okay, so now let's uh, move. 
so uh, this is the provisioning of zookeeper we have uh, we are continuously working in the in the project and we plan to uh, uh, expand the project more so we plan to add day two operations for managing zookeeper the day two operation can be like uh, vertical scaling horizontal scaling uh, reconfiguration or we will also add uh, tls support for the zookeeper in the near future and uh, we will also support backup or backup and restore using our another product stash in the zookeeper and uh, tls support will be added soon so now let's head over to the qa session if you have any question uh, let me know uh, you can unmute yourself and ask me the question uh, or you can ask me through the zoom chat Okay, I guess we don't have any questions. So uh, thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for your time. And we'll see you again with another topic.